everybody this is Franco and this video is going to be part two of my videos here how to control any spindle with a centroid acorn so let me give you a quick little demo I guess we'll demo this before I do anything I'll show you what I have working so I'm going to come over here and what I'm going to do is put my CNC 12 into manual mode and I'm going to press this button right here and cycle start and lo and behold look at that a spindles running so let me attempt to hold the camera on the spindle while I press the controls on the screen okay so as I'm pressing the controls on the screen I'm actually controlling my spindle And uh, likewise, I can do that if I come back over here and put my spindle control back into auto mode. Okay, now my spindle's controlled by uh, programs. So what I'm going to do here is fire off an M, well first I'm going to say, let's say G97, which puts it in direct RPM, M3S500. I'm going to press enter. And then I'll pick up my pendant, I'll come over here, I'll press cycle start on the pendant, and there we go, look at that, spindle is on. Uh, so now let's do something cool. Let's, let's come over here and let's put it into G96, that's uh, constant surface feet, G96, uh, S, I don't know, I'm just going to pick 100. Enter. And I'll come back over here. Okay, so now it's reading constant surface footage based off of the position of the tool. So if, as I jog the tool, let's see if I can do all this safely without... You can see as the RPM's increasing, as I jog the tool to a, a larger and larger X value, the spindle is slowing down. Let's see how slow I can make it go. Put a big mark on that bar so you can see it, right? So that's the whole idea with constant surface footage. It's looking at the position of the, the X axis and it's increasing the RPMs as you get closer and closer to the center. All right, um, so let me go over here and stop the spindle. So I'll just give it an M5, enter, and cycle start, and that stops the spindle. All right, so what do we have here? Well, I have the centroid acorn wired into the KBSI240D signal isolator. And then I have the voltage coming out of the signal isolator um, going into the uh, KB, I forget what model this is, um, KBLC240DS. This is a KBLC240DS. So basically, I have the voltage coming from the signal isolator into the appropriate terminals on this DC drive, and that is what, <coughs> excuse me, that is what is telling the little lathe here uh, how fast to turn the spindle. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Uh, it actually was really pretty easy to hook this up, and you know I have a very temporary set up up here as far as a uh, CNC control enclosure. In fact, I don't have an enclosure. I have a piece of plywood with a bunch of stuff screwed to it, but that's working right now. I'll keep up with that until I finally figure out what all I want to do here, and then I'll put it in an enclosure. But um, yeah, I guess now's a good time to make my obligatory disclaimer. I am not an electronics expert. I am not an expert on this. Uh, technically, I'm not qualified to give anyone advice on electronics. So anytime you're watching my videos, please remember you are responsible for your own safety. All right, 
So yeah, so just like the last video showed, um, we have the analog signal coming out of the centroid acorn, going into the appropriate terminals on the signal isolator, which last video uh, explained how to do that. We have the voltage coming out of the signal isolator. This is um, <clears throat> a low current voltage, so there's a little confusion about this. This is not enough, well, let's see, put it in layman's terms. There's not enough power coming out of here to actually drive the motor directly. All this is is the control voltage. This is just a control signal. You still need your, your spindle drive to power your spindle motor. Uh, the acorn and the signal isolator do not make enough power to drive your motor. You still need the signal or the, uh, the spindle drive controller uh, to drive the motor. All you're doing is you're using the, the control voltage, which is, you know, low, very low current. You're just using that to tell this board what to do. So this is going to be very typical of uh, really any uh, DC motor controller. This is a, you know, a KB Electronics motor controller from Sherline. If you're using a Chinese um, mini lathe or a Chinese mini mill or, you know, any, um, you know, any machine that's using a, a DC motor controller with a potentiometer, it's going to be a very similar hookup. So, you know, fortunately, the, this KB Electronics stuff is all, like, really good stuff. And they tell you exactly what to do. When you, when you read the instructions, they, they basically tell you right, right on their board. <clears throat> It says <clears throat> the uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The board can be operated in a voltage following mode by supplying an isolated <clears throat> analog signal zero to seven volts to the input terminals P two plus and F minus. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a frog in my throat here. But so when you look at their schematic. You can see, uh, you know, P2 is right here. It's one of the wires that came off the potentiometer. And F minus is right back there. So, like, literally all I did was hook the voltage up. The positive voltage went here to P2. The negative voltage went to F minus. And um, that was it. So, you can refer to the documentation for your, uh, your DC spindle drive and hopefully it's clear enough that it will it will tell you what to do if you're on a chinese uh, mini lathe or mini mill or one of those types of things uh, you may have to get your multimeter out and do a little bit of uh, diagnostic testing here to figure out uh, which one of these three wires you need to interface with and i'm pretty sure it's going to be one of these three wires if you're if you're working on you know your Chinese mini mill or mini lathe. Fortunately, I have this nice schematic that I shared in my last video where this very very nice gentleman provided this to me, where he actually gives you an example of how to wire it up to a machine like this, uh, Precision Matthews PM twenty five MV, and I can tell you in my uh, my experience, I think the schematic is going to be pretty typical for most of the Chinese um, DC spindle controllers. Okay, so uh, just a few quick, quick little nuances. Um, let's put this thing. So right now I have my my wizard settings for CNC 12. I have the max RPM set for this machine to be uh, 2,000. 250 RPM. So what that means right now is I'm just going to put this in manual mode and I'm going to press the this button which if you watch what happens here watch the screen so as I press the minus it goes down as I press the plus it goes it goes up uh, when I press this button that's labeled 100% when you're in when you're in manual mode, the hundred percent button is actually uh, fifty percent of whatever your maximum RPM is. That's, I know that may not seem extremely uh, clear, 
there's, there's a reason why it's set up like this on the screen, uh, because y they want to have a 100% button. So when you're in auto mode, you hit 100%, you get 100% of your programmed RPM. But when you're in manual mode, um, when you hit 100%, you get 50% of your, your max RPM. So let's just turn that on. Um, so remember, my max RPM is 2,250. When I hit this button, you know, the one in the middle, it takes it to basically 50% of my max RPM. And then as I increase it, my RPM goes higher. So, so there we go. Um, what I did, so here's, here's kind of a little, little secret you need to know. The output that comes out of the Acorn uh, right now, the way this is designed, the way it works, it's designed to send a 0 to 10 volt signal to a VFD, a variable frequency drive. Variable frequency drives are very, you know, very precision electronics, very accurate. Um, even the, you know, even the cheap ones that you buy, <clears throat> they're very linear in their input. So if, if 10 volts is 100%, you know, full, full max RPM, 5 volts will be 50%, 1 volt will be 10%. They're very, they're very linear in uh, the way they read the input voltage. It's, you know, they're very precise. These uh, DC spindle drivers, they are not designed the same way. Um, so their input may not always be linear. So what does that mean? Well, I'll show you what it means. Uh, it's probably easier than explaining it. So let's go over here. Let's just turn the spindle on. So there it is. There's my spindle. Actually, this might be easier if I put it in auto mode. So let's do it with MDI. Okay, we're in auto mode. I'm going to give you a G97 M3 S1125. Cycle start. Okay, it's pretty pretty close to 11:25. Um, now I'm going to give you an M3. Let's do this. Five hundred. So I just command at five hundred. You can see it's not exactly five hundred. It's actually a little less than five hundred. Well, let's go and do this. Command 1500. It's actually a little bit more than 1500. So what what's going on here? It's actually, you know, oh boy, I'm not good with art with with this, but let me let me try to do this. So here's, um, here we go. Let's call this, um, let's call this voltage and let's call this RPM. So VFD is very linear. Very linear. As you increase voltage, you're going to increase RPM. Um, the DC spindle drive is not linear. Let me just think in my head how to how to do this. Um, I think it looks something more like this. If I can draw it, let's see if I can draw it. It looks more like this. So what's happening um, is your at your slower RPMs, you're a little less than what you command, and at your higher RPMs you're going to be a little more than what you command. I may not have drawn that exactly perfectly, but you get the idea. So VFD, very linear. 
going to be very linear and it's the way it reacts to the control signal. DC spindle drives, not linear. Um, they're not linear. They're going to have sort of an S-shaped, you know, response curve. And I have a feeling I may look at this video after I make it and think that I, I may have drawn this curve, maybe not exactly 100% correct, but you get the idea. So what do you do? You come over here, you put your spindle in manual mode, you put it at 50% of whatever your max is, Hit, turn this spindle on, you look at what your encoder is telling you, and then you come over here to one of the various pots. So this pot right here is how I adjust my max voltage. You just turn that to tweak in your RPM. So for me, I tweaked it in right at what would be 50%. So I figure if I get 50, if I get my spindle dead on at 50% max, you know, that's splitting the difference. Um, so depending on what range you run your spindle in, you may want to do that differently. But for me, I'm splitting the difference. So at 50% of max RPM speed, I'm right on. Anything slower than 50%, I, I, um, or anything less than 50%, I'm going to be a little bit slower than what I command it. Anything greater than 50%, I'm going to be a little bit faster than what I command it. Um, you know what? It's all good, and I'll tell you why. Because when you are in tapping mode, threading mode, um, when you're in your uh, feed per inch modes, all these different modes, guess what? They don't actually necessarily care what you command it as your speed. What they do is they look at your actual speed. So the encoder, uh, which on the Acorn, you have super, super, super precise spindle feedback. This encoder is, <laughs> this is a very inexpensive Chinese encoder. It's still producing 8,000 pulses per revolution. Um, the Centroid Acorn board is fast enough to read 8,000 pulses per revolution and react to it. So you're getting uh, extremely accurate spindle feedback. So uh, it's not necessarily a big deal if your, your spindle drive is not responding 100% correctly to the signals that it's receiving, the Acorn board and the CNC12 software will compensate for that. So it doesn't matter if your spindle's a little faster than you command it, if it's a little slower than you command it, it doesn't care. The CNC12 is going to look at the encoder feedback and it's going to compensate all of your threading, all of your tapping, your feed per revolution uh, programming, it's going to compensate that to make sure that uh, what you command is exactly what you get. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's pretty cool. All right, well, this video is long enough. I'm going to cut it short or cut it right there. Uh, but this is pretty cool. I'm stoked. Uh, I don't have forward and reverse working but I, I do have uh, the spindle speed working, and that's actually going to uh, really save me a lot of time. I, I'm, I'm going to enjoy that a lot, because now I don't have to manually adjust my RPMs every time I program something. I can just let the program control the speed of the spindle. So I'm kind of a lazy person when it comes to this stuff, um, and now I can be even a little bit lazier as I am controlling my spindle. All right. Thanks for watching, be safe, and have a nice day.